Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome to Construct Your Light. This is Austin Linney here. I have the honor of having Mr. Carlos Colon here. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing excellent. How about you? I'm doing good, man. We appreciate you uh, jumping on in the middle of a move and 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 in the construction of the new office. So it's good, man. Uh, you have me. Thank you. You know what I like to do with my guests is I like to let them kind of start their story where they want to, and we'll kind of go from there. So. Okay. You start wherever you want. It could be at one years old, 16. It doesn't matter, my man. <laughs> man, uh, put me in the spot right off the back. I like it. So um, I guess I could start with um, with the reason why I'm why I'm even here. Um, you know, one of one of the reasons I'm here, uh, it's uh, is to hopefully make a difference. You know, my 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 goal in life. And I know this sounds cliche and everybody talks about it and everybody says the same thing, but my goal truly is to to leave this place a little better than I found it. Uh, you know, I, I I heard somebody say, and I can't remember exactly who it was, and I wish I gave him the credit, but somebody said that we shouldn't set goals that we could achieve. He said our goals should be so big that they, that we never achieve them, but that we always have a north star and where we know where we know where we're going. And uh, that kind of stuck with me. And and uh, you know, I always thought, you know, I want to. I had this giant dream of like making a difference in this world. And then I realized that uh, I think it was Mother Teresa that said, you know, if you can't, if you can't serve, serve the masses, start with one. Mm-hmm. So here we are one by one, you know, trying to help as many people as we can and, and uh, making a difference, bringing some positive uh, cash flow into this community and to, into this uh, crazy world that we live in. And, and uh, man, I'm glad we connected. Yeah, man, it's interesting. I was talking to a coaching client this morning and he's having some trouble with his health. And it's it's kind of along the lines of what you said earlier is like, I know, but like, what is 10 minutes going to do for me? He's like, that's what he said to me. Like, what's 10 minutes going to do for me? And I said, hey, motherfucker, you're not listening to me. You have it twisted. It's the commitment and, and the acceptance of doing it. That's going to unlock something in your brain. And then maybe three weeks down the road, it comes in at 20 minutes, but you're not even giving yourself permission to do it. So that's, I think I truly, we have a, in my group coaching tonight, we have, it's about all about goals. I think goals, if you can't obtain your goal, what are you, what are you doing? Like, and the thing is, is like the pursuit of the goal, the pursuit of what I leave behind. That's the actual rub. It's like you and I are the type of people, like, we're not going to like, I tried the beach thing. It lasted about eight hours. <laughs> and even that was like, I think I was stoned. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, like I had to like force myself. Here's the deal. I know this is very scary to say. We like to work. Like, and that's okay. It's taken me a long time to say that. But my girlfriend's like, you're a better person when you work. <laughs> that's amazing. My, my wife said the same things. Now, she, you know, like, one of the things that I think that made that has made my relationship with my wife now successful is the fact that we understand that about each other. Mm-hmm. My wife doesn't have to work, but she works 50 hours a week mm-hmm. and she comes home, takes care of business at home, takes care of the kids. You know, we have a six year old together and uh, a couple of other kids running around. And, um, you know, it's like when you're not productive, like I, I, like people like me and you're like when we're not productive, what are we doing? We're just sitting there and our and our wheels are spinning. And we don't even know what to do with ourselves. We got to be putting our energy into some type of effort. Mm-hmm. And, and there's this difference between money, revenue, and fulfillment. And I think a lot of people don't think that they can coincide in one sector, but they can, right? Yes. And so, um, you know, what are, the, what are the buckets for you in your businesses? What, what are you, what's your specialty right now as we talk today? So I'm an insurance broker by trade. I've been doing insurance for the last 11 years. Mm-hmm. I started in the in the life insurance uh, industry, and and it kind of progressed from there. So I I did really well with life insurance, 
And then I started introducing all the types of uh, financial services like annuities, disability, you know, health. And then eventually my wife and I decided that we were going to uh, buy an insurance agency to do everything, commercial, you know, um, auto, home, you know, everything, everything we could. And um, that also kind of took us a, a different a different route. But um, yeah, so we continue to introduce more businesses into our into our umbrella. And now our kind of like our, our specialty now is doing life insurance, infinite banking. And then we introduce different forms of um, passive income opportunities like Forex, e-commerce. And, uh, and we also own a couple of businesses on the side too. Like we own a, a medical clinic for pain management, mm-hmm. but that's, that's besides the point. Our specialty here is uh, generating revenue. And, and what's interesting to me is these rich white fuckers have been keeping this infinite banking thing to themselves for a long time, but it's starting to get out there, right? My boy yes. does it. My boy's a, a big in the space. And I just talked to my client about it this morning. He's making great money. Didn't know anything about it. This is a 45 year old human being. Mm. Um, and your definition, how, what's the easiest way to describe infinite banking? So infinite banking uh, by definition is when you become your own bank. But if you ask me how I describe it, I describe it by supercharging your savings because you have a vehicle where you're putting money in and obviously there's cost of insurance and you need to be able to qualify. So there's a lot of you know disclaimers. Uh, but if you're able to qualify and if you're able to afford to do it, because not everybody, it's not for everybody, you're going to put money in here in this bucket. And then this bucket is going to be earning interest. And then if you're earning interest and you're with a mutual company, you're also earning dividends. So now this bucket right here is earning, you know, dividends and interest. And let's say you wanted to jump on a real estate opportunity. You could then turn around um, and borrow money against your money, against this bucket, and then use it for real estate. But in the meantime, it never leaves this bucket. It's like this bucket is still full. This bucket continues to earn. And then the, the trick is to make sure that it's earning more than you're paying here for the loan, because the loan will have, you know, some type of interest that you will have to pay back. Or if you kick the bucket, you pay it back with your death benefit. But that loan will need to get paid back. But the trick is this money never leaves. Mm-hmm. So when you pay this money back, you never stop earning. So it's like supercharging your savings. Mm-hmm. I have a guy in Arizona who has five of them and he takes two of them to to do his flips and everything. And then he loans money to other investors and he's making like 10% on his money. And he's like, this is, (laughs) he's like, I like this shit. Right. It's it's so crazy. You know, like when you, when you talk, when you look at the, at the portfolio of of like a bank, like where's their money, real Mm -hmm. estate and insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You look at these, Mo, you know, like the Warren Buffett's like, yeah, he's made a ton of money in the stock market, but where does he have a park real estate and insurance? Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they, they knew, they knew how to, how to work the system and take advantage of contract law and, and uh, to truly increase their wealth. And now this is available to everybody. That's the crazy part. This is available to everyone, but look, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I come from like absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. I come from a very, you know, I don't even call it humble beginnings. I call it shitty beginnings. I, I come from nothing. You know, I, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Then I moved to the ghetto south of Boston and, and things were not looking good. And mm-hmm. when I first heard infinite banking, I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what it was. In fact, mm-hmm. when I first heard that you could save money on a life insurance policy, talking about IULs, VULs, et cetera, I, it was a foreign subject to me. My definition of insurance was, okay, I'm going to pay this little bit of premium. And if I die, then my family's going to get this much uh, good riddance. That was it. And so it took me years of truly like digging into these, you know, this knowledge and books and, and information that's, that's out there for everybody. Mm-hmm. And that, that's the crazy part. If you mm-hmm. look for it, you can find it and you could do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think ultimately what's interesting when it comes down to, to things like that, and I, I, I'll be hundred percent Frank, like I didn't even know about it till like three years ago. Like, and I'm, and I talk to everybody. So, you know, like, Oh, it's all relative, but what it takes is kind of a, I'm going to see till I find. Right. And I think investing, right. Or starting businesses has taught you that mindset of like, no, I like, no, doesn't mean no. Like no means I haven't found the right option or I haven't found the right person 
to put me where I need to be. Wow. Right. That's, that's the mindset shift because, because, you know, we had a, um, we had a company that we've been trying to put together for three months and the guy wound up losing his father and, and wound up deciding to go spend time with family instead. And, 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 and we champion that like, like, dude, Hey, if you want to go spend time with your family, like, dude, we're good. But that left us dead in the water. I made two phone calls. We're, we're good. We got a new partner. Like, you know, and so like, it's not like, what am I going to do? Like one of the, one of this really good investors, a friend of mine, uh, he buys like, I think he has like 400 houses or something like that. And he said that, uh, he said that he only checks his email for an hour a day and he only checks it from five to six. And the reason he does that is because he wants to teach his team to work without him. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he had a house burned down and he didn't know about it for three days. And he goes, he goes, what the fuck did you want me to do? Put on my fireman outfit. I couldn't have stopped that. And it's just what a mentality to say like, Hey, we're going to deal with it. There's insurance on the property. It, there's just different levels to this way of thinking. And, and when you start, you know, peeling back the onion, you can really create some, some, some amazing mindset around some stuff. That's so true. So one, one of the biggest like lessons that I've learned in this journey of being an entrepreneur, I'm going to be 43 in January. And uh, I've been, I've been giving it a shot since I was in my early twenties. And I've been actually successfully doing it for just, you know, like the last five years. So one of the things that I learned is that mindset, as, as cliche as it sounds, it truly is everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not going to make you the money. It's not going to do it for you. Mm-hmm. But it's going to allow you to do the things that you're supposed to be doing to make the money and to, and to take care of business. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I remember me and my wife were having this conversation. That she truly is my real business partner. Like, my wife is my, my everything. And uh, we were having this conversation. I was like, can you re- do you remember when, we're, when our goal was, like, to make, like, $250,000 a year? And then it was like, okay, well, I think we could make 500,000. I think we can make 1.2 million. And now 1.2 million will be like a horrible year. And, mm-hmm. but it goes right back to what you said, like the way, what you said when you started, it's not even about the money. It's about the fulfillment and about the impact that we can make. It's not mm-hmm. like, I realized that when I had a million dollars in the bank, I was, it was still me. I was still I was still there. You know, it's like, I think John Maxwell was like, yes, where, uh, wherever you are there, you mm-hmm. are. And, and I realized, okay, so it's still me and nothing really has changed. Our bills have gotten a lot more expensive. Um, our level of responsibility has gotten more expensive and I don't feel any different. Mm-hmm. I think well, a lot of people think they'll, they'll arrive somewhere and be like, oh, you know, light will start shining from their face and everything. And it's not the case. Oh, it's not the case. And, and not only that, it's so far from the truth. It's ridiculous. Right. And, you know, in the last, you know, last year I got, I got uh, a year and a half, I got divorced and I got laid off in the same week. Right. And I started a podcast, you know, it was like, it, it's a very roller coaster of a week and, um, you know, I had to give up a house that had a lot of equity into it, had to give up a dog, you know, most of my stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was me, my bike and about seven boxes. Right. And it's the freest I ever felt. It's the freest I ever felt. And I realized like, holy shit, I don't need fucking jack shit. Like, and and for me, it's people and travel. That's all I care about. Impact people travel. And so if I'm doing those things, then regardless of what it looks like on the outside, meaning the cars, the the things, it's a, but, 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 but here's the rub. It, it, you really have to know who you are for it not to bother you. And I don't think enough people, they're being distracted by, you know, drugs and alcohol, Netflix, whatever. They're not really saying, like, do you really want that shit? Like, I heard some guy say the other day, he's like, I've coached people my whole life for 10 years. I've asked them one question. It's the first thing they say to me. I want to be a millionaire. Okay, great. Why? Nobody has an answer. He goes, what if I gave you 600000 And they go, oh, I'll take that too. And he goes, see, you didn't even really want the million. <laughs> You know, and it's, 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 it's one of those things that I don't think we really, I don't think we really looked at our lifestyle and said, this is what I want. Like, because at the end of the day, you could figuratively, you could shut it, not shut it down, but you could coast probably for the next 20 years and be a hundred percent fine if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So yeah, that's, that's really interesting because that, that is one of the biggest things, you know, like, my, my, 
I, I go back to my wife, man. She, she's a, she's a really good woman. And, um, she's still like, even when she doesn't have to, she's still like price shops. She still, you know, she still wants to go to target. She still wants to, you know, like go to the clearance rack. She doesn't have to, but she's always telling me and, and I love it because I think in every relationship there needs to be a visionary and there needs to be an operator. And I think that in, in my partnership with my partner, Ryan, he's the operator. I'm the visionary. And in my marriage with my wife, Jocelyn, I'm the visionary. She's the operator. She's the one telling me like, yeah, but we could take that money. We could put it in an annuity and and do this with it. And now we have our retirement set up. Me, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like I'm thinking, you know, we could blow this up. We could make this much. We could do this and that. She's the one that kind of like grabs me and puts me. If it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for our spouses, because I think you and I are very similar, mm-hmm. you know, I would Airbnb the car and the dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't care about my personal comfort. Now, one of the things I'm trying to learn is that I do operate when my environment is good. Like I like a good office, like I like a good office and a good gym. If you give me those two things and and, you know what, and a patio. So if you give me my backyard, an office and a gym, I'm straight. Like, you know, but one of the things I've been trying to talk myself into is because like, I always do this to myself. Like I travel and I like, I won't get the hotel that I want. You know, and then I'm at the hotel that I picked and I'm like, let's fuck this. God damn it. You know, and I tell myself every time. So what one of the things I'm working with a lot of entrepreneurs are is like, how do you, because you are doing so many things, how do you celebrate your wins? Like, how do you like, and I know you came, like, you can share on that story if you want, but you know, like, do you practice gratitude? Like on a daily basis? Is that how you kind of celebrate your wins? Cause we're, there's always going to be more. Right. That's the rub. It's like, how do you how do you like anchor those moments? So that's a that's a really good question. And that's like a really personal question to me, because, uh, uh, you know, like I said earlier, like I come from absolutely nothing. And, I, you know, I'm very, very careful to not celebrate my wings too long. I think a lot of people get in celebration mode and, and then it kills the momentum. So I'm very careful to like I practice gratitude every morning, every morning. Um you know, I have a I have a daily routine that I do not alter because I feel like that's my grounding. Like if I mess up my daily routine, my entire day is off. So I start my day. I literally, unless I have to go to the bathroom and pee really bad, I literally roll out of bed into my knees and I give thanks. And, and I do that every single morning and I go get my little six-year-old to get him ready for school. And I make sure that during that time that I'm with my six-year-old, I'm not doing any work. So it's just my wife, my six-year-old, my my seventeen-year-olds. Uh, getting re- they get ready for school, and it's just me there with them. I make them breakfast. We'll chat a little bit, have some uh, water and black coffee, and uh, after that, as soon as they leave, I work out. And then um, I don't know if you asked me all this, but now I'm kind of I'm just no, it's it. good, it's perfect, uh, yeah. So as soon as I as soon as they leave, I work out, and then uh, after you know I finish working out, I groom, and then I get ready and I set my intention for the day. I try to always pick at least three things that I could do for the day. My list will be really long. I, you know, like I have a to-do list, but I always try to pick like my top three um, milestones of the day. And if I don't do anything else, those three things have to get done. And it's typically the hardest things of the day. Like I try to just eat the frog as soon as possible um, and, and get to work on it. But you know, um, I sell, I do celebrate. I do get nice things for myself. I don't, I don't go overboard. I don't get anything that I can't really like afford. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I seen like, like all the, all my peers, like, you know, diamond watches and all that stuff. And I, and I, and I have one, I actually have one and I gave it away. I gave it away to a buddy of mine because to be honest, man, I'm, it's like, it doesn't really do anything for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm just really grateful for the process. Sure. That's, that's sure. really what I'm grateful for. It's awesome to win. It's even better to realize that you became a better person in the process of winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what people don't understand, right? When you come from places, a drug addiction, where you did from poverty, like the thing that's actually harder is to learn how to win and keep winning. Yeah. Like that's the scary thing. That's why people won't stop. That's why they're burnt out. Yes. Because they're so scared if they flip off the pedal for one day, it's all going to come crashing down because they don't truly believe that they've created success. I've asked the same question to 500 fucking people and no motherfuckers answered it. I say, are you successful? Nobody says yes. 
And I said, success is a personal choice. It's a reality. Yes. Like I'm not, I'm not a drug addict anymore. Like I'm successful as fuck. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, it's like those little moments, right. But we can be moving so quickly that we don't even realize how far we've come because what, when you're around people like we are every day, like those years, you can pack a lot in a year. Mm-hmm. Like it's been a fucking crazy year. And I look at all my friends and everybody I talk to, everybody's healthier than they've ever been. They're more connected with their family. Business is booming because we didn't see an opportunity and say, oh, I'm just going to shut it down during this fuck crazy ass fucking two years. We said, no, we're going to double down on everything and look where we all are. Like everybody, I, I don't know about you, but everybody I'm yeah. around is winning right now. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And it's so, it's so true that you say that because one of the first conversations that I have with my wife when we were um, getting in, you know, into business together and doing different things is she, she told me straight up to my face. She was like, she was like, Carlos, you're never going to be successful until you stop sabotaging yourself. Yes. He was like, like, why are you so afraid to be successful? Like you're going to have to forgive yourself. And, and, and I was like, whoa, whoa, easy. That's, you hit me with something heavy here, like forgive myself. And then I realized she was so right. Because of the way I grew up and all the things that I did while I was growing up, I was, I was almost ashamed to be successful. Mm-hmm. And I knew that my success was going to come at the price of losing friends and family members, which I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, I had to like, I had to let go of that. I had to completely accept that at some point in time, I was going to be the, guy, the bad guy in somebody else's story. And I needed to accept that because you know, we're the heroes of our own story, but mm-hmm. just because we're the heroes, it doesn't mean that we're not the villains to somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, I was just listening to Jordan Peterson, his book, uh, 12 rules of life. He talks about chaos to us. It's a, it's a mother, uh, a mother bear mm-hmm. who nurtures and loves her cup so much that she's willing to tear us to pieces. Mm-hmm. So to mm-hmm. us, she's the bad guy. But to her mm-hmm. cubs, she's a hero. Mm-hmm. And, and that's us right now. Uh, like the more we win, you know, the more we become villains in somebody else's story. I had a lot of people reach out to me after I got sober and I started the podcast. Mm-hmm. And they'd send me DMs like, I don't know who the fuck you think you are. Like you're a drunk. Like who would listen to you? Like go fuck yourself. Like all the time. Not yeah. so much anymore. And I like at first I was like, fuck, god damn, like what did I do? But then I realized like that's just their own insecurities with themselves. And you know what's fucking crazy is now I have those same people reaching out to me asking me for help. These are old bosses. Yeah. These are old, like, does any like I had to destroy everything, like everything in my life, like burn it, burn the boats, do the dynamite. But here's what they don't tell you: the joys of that is you finally get to leave what you don't want and take what you will and get to move on with your day. It's liberating. So there's actually some freedom in blowing your entire fucking life up. It really is. And um, I think, I think people underestimate the power of being the real self, your real self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you have no option, but to be you Mm -hmm. like, dude, Mm -hmm. this is what, this is what you get. Like Mm -hmm. there isn't anything else. I'm not going to, you know, like I don't talk differently to my clients that I'm talking to you right now. Oh, dude, that's my number one. Oh, I spent 20 years in hospitality. The number one thing I would hate, my boss would say to me, hey, that's the coach, by the way, waited mm-hmm. on him all the time. That's the coach at the Spurs. Make sure you give him VIP treatment. No, I'm good. Nope. The janitor, Greg Popovich, they get the same shit and they're both happy. Yep. That's the way I roll. And I can't stand that this or that or whatever it's, you know, and I think at the end of the day, and even I'll admit it, I didn't say this till two and a half years ago. I never said out loud that I was going to be successful. Like I never fucking said it until I got in a fight with my ex-wife and we were in the car and it was like one of the last fights. And I was like, I will be motherfucking successful. And there's nothing that you're going to do. That's going to hold me back from that. And in that moment, it felt like all this fucking just bullshit left off of me because I finally admitted to myself because 90 percent of the men are walking around working fucking 90 hours a week and going, I'm doing this for y'all. And the kids are looking back and going, we didn't ask you to, motherfucker. (laughs) It's for you. 
Just yeah. say it's for you and then move on with your day. Like men, dude, I'm sorry. You can ask my mentor who's worth plenty of money. He's like, motherfucker, I'm selfish. He's like, I like it. He's like, I like this shit. I like development. I wanted to buy hotels. Like, that's okay. But we've like, we've like talked. It's the same thing I told you when we talked. Everybody's telling you, Carlos, stop making money. You made too much money already. Or the same people, like die on that sword. No, if I have more money, I can give more money. Like stop, stop shooting capitalism down. It's what created this country. That's it. I always say, you know, and I tell my children this and I tell anybody that will listen, don't ever apologize for wanting more out of life. Mm-hmm. Like we are all going to be at the end of the, at the end of the life, at the end of everything, especially life insurance. I use this metaphor very, very much. So I'm like, look, one day you're going to be six feet under seven feet in a seven feet long casket and it's going to be you. And that's it. So you better take care of you first. You can't give what you don't have. Mm-hmm. And more than anything, I wanted to show my kids. So I came from nothing. And I wanted, I, I, I worked for years with a chip on my shoulder, angry, angry, because I thought that I was dealt a shitty card. Mm-hmm. You know, like, why did I have to grow up in this family? Why? I don't even know my father. Like, why did my father care to even know me? He, he was, I hate to shit on him like this, but so be it. He was supposed to pay $15 a week. That's a one and a five, 15 mm-hmm. bucks a week for child support that he never paid. We, it was like, so you know, for the whole, this whole yeah. time, I'm like bitter. Dude, it's crazy. I heard this and this, res, this resonates to you. If he was the father that I wanted him to be, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. That is so true. That is so and, true. And, 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 and Brene Brown said this, it's so much easier for us to be angry at them than to be sad that they're just never going to be what I want them to be mm. because that feeling is so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But, and, and that's how, that's how I live my life for many years, just angry and, and trying to prove everybody wrong. And then you know what I realized? Nobody gave a shit. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody. Hey, was but hold on. Hey, hold on. Isn't that isn't that the most fucked up day though? When you finally clicks, like you're just like <laughs> you're like. Brother, I've been running was, around here brooding for fucking it, years. You're like, I made it, and then you look back and you're like, nobody gave a shit. <laughs> and I was like, well, I might as well just keep doing it for myself then. Yeah. No, then it becomes 100 percent free. Yeah. Right. Then it's 100. percent So for anybody that's out there. For any of the young kids that are looking to get in business, investing, everything, you know, what's kind of your, you know, quick tips for them, like over the years that you've been doing business and so on that you've learned for yourself that you, any advice you could give them? Yeah. Uh, so my advice is going to be a little unorthodox because um, I I grew up a little bit, you know, on the other side. But so I recommend two things. Number one is you have to build your backbone. And I don't think this gets talked about enough. You have to become gritty and you have to become the very most savage. And I don't mean like, oh, let's be a savage. I mean, the very most savage version of you under control. Um, And one of the things that helped me was fighting. So I started I started training when I was 12 years old, 13 years old. I started doing boxing. Uh, from boxing, I moved to, you know, um, Muay Thai, MMA, Jiu Jitsu. And that taught me to be pretty fearless. So I highly recommend it. I highly recommend that you put yourself, it doesn't have to be fighting, you know, fighting is just not for everybody. Nobody wants to freaking have a, you know, a nose that turns into a Nike symbol if you if you squeeze it enough. Um, but get into something uncomfortable, that forces you to 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 be out of character and out of your comfort zone and out of, and out of, out of the easy, right? Because business is going to kick your ass and business. It's going to be a bunch of failure sprinkled with successes. So if you don't have the backbone, if you don't have the grit, if you don't have the resilience to get back up and continue going, you will quit and you never know I will say that I've been working. So I've been an entrepreneur since I was in my early 20s. I literally just got, quote unquote, money where I started making over seven figures about a few years ago. 
So it took me all that time. Imagine I would have gave up when I was 38. I will still be in the same position. I will probably be working. Let me, I, I, I posted this on social media the other day. The, my old job, I had a salary. It would have taken me over 20 years of that salary to make what I made in the last like three months. So we're talking about what kind of life do you want to lead? And it doesn't matter. You know, being, having a job is completely fine. My wife has a job. She loves it and she does really well. You know, and I know plenty of people that do really, really well. One of my best friends is in the military. He's retiring as a captain. He's done really, really well. So, but what kind of life do you truly want? Figure that out and then build your career around your life, not your life around your career, Mm -hmm. or you will be miserable every single day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah, gritty and build your life before your career. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's something that's not talked about enough, you know, and resilience. Like, dude, you know, I, that's why I love Tim Grover because he, he just, he's so raw about his shit because like, what does he say? Like winning's like the three legged chair. And then as soon as you sit on the motherfucker, he's yanked out from underneath you, you know, like he's a fucking crazy motherfucker. I love it because, you know, everybody asks me all the time, like, why, like, you just don't give a shit anymore. It's just because I've been in the fires enough. Like I've lost the money. I've been fucked over many, many, many times and I just don't care. And, and, but, but when it's, when you're getting out of the gate and you know, what is that law of the nature, like the the law of favor, right? They'll give you some wins at the beginning and then, then the Lord and the universe is going to see how bad you really want it. Mm. Right. And I couldn't like, but when you plant your flat, like, like I tell everybody all the time, like, what's the option? Like, seriously. Like, what's the option? What are you going to go do? You're going to go back and like slink back to your job. And, you know, you only want to go back to that because it's comfortable, because it's so easy, because entrepreneurship is walking down a fucking hall with the lights off and you can't find the door. There's no handles. But I promise you, you own your time. And not everybody needs to be an entrepreneur, but you can go work for one or you can go join a company that is because at the end of the day, when you get the money, or when you sell the house or when you do everything, like my perfect example is like crypto, right? Like there's a lot of motherfuckers that just get, guess right. I don't give a shit what they tell you. Right. And they don't have the financial wherewithal to spend the money. That's why they're scared shitless. That's why they won't, they won't liquidate because they don't, they don't know anything. It's like, it's like an athlete getting money when they don't know anything, like they just like, you know, but that happens to people and then other people have to work for it. And so, you know, it's like at the end of the day, you have to build up, like you said, a backbone to create because it's not some days it's going to be easy and some days it's going to be really hard. And at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's what we have to look forward to. And, and it's just, it's, it, don't think it's going to be easy. Millionaires still have problems. <laughs> Absolutely. And they be, they're bigger when it comes, especially financially. But here, here my, 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 me and my partner, Ryan, we, we're always joking around. This is the, the stages of business. We're in a problem. We just left the problem or we're going into a problem. That's, that's it. That's it. And anybody, anybody in the world with, with somewhat of common sense can make decisions for a business and be just fine. Mm-hmm. It's, that, it's that chosen few that are able to handle those problems. Mm-hmm. That are really the ones that succeed in business, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and you hit it right. Like you don't have to, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. You could work to, with an entrepreneur that aligns with your values. You could work with a company that comes close to what you want to accomplish. Be it's okay to be a part of something without being the the lead. Because at the end of the day, like one thing that I realized running my business is that now where my business is, I don't own my business. My business pretty much owns me because mm-hmm. every everything good that happens gets credited to my team. Everything bad that happens is my responsibility. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's awesome. I could I I could take time off. I know my partners have it. You know Ryan, Alex. Uh, I know that they'll run the business without me. They don't even need me to make decisions. But if an issue happens where, where something grossly gets mismanaged or something, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I have to take care of that business. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all about the people. It's all about your team. And 
you know, just it, it's you need a backbone for that. You, you truly do. <laughs> yeah, you do. And you need to be. And this is what I'm. I always have like a theme uh, every year, like a word. And, and I could just basically take the same word for the next 60 years and, and be good. Emotional stability. Ooh. Like that's my number one thing I work on because I know as a CEO, you know, it, it, you can't, they can also feed off the energy, but they can also feed in the negative way if you can't keep your shit together. So yeah, super, super important. So if people want to find out about what you got going on and, and what you're doing, how would they do that? Uh, they could go to my website. I got a couple of websites. Uh, they can go to my website, just like my name, carloseecolon.com, C-R-L-O-S-E-C-O-L-O-N.com. Or my company website is acefg.com. It stands for acefinancialgroup.com. Um, either way, they could contact me there or follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is official underscore Carlos underscore Cologne. I'm always happy to meet people and, um, you know, value is free. You don't have to, you know, anything that, that I could possibly be of value to you. I'm not going to charge you for it. That's what we're here for. So. I love it. Guys, if you like this episode, send it out to your friend, share it with somebody that'll get some value and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.